Well, greetings, visitors to the paper prison. It is I, your host, the Comics Prisoner. Sentence for crimes against comics illustration to be confined within beautiful pieces of comics art and to sing their praises to make up for my transgressions. And I am welcoming you, I am welcoming you back to uh, this series, which I'm having a lot of fun with a great time in the Incredible Hulk comic book series between about issues 223 and 229 where it just had a great run of both story and art. So welcome back. <clears throat> um, I, uh, I need to uh, be up front with everyone here. I'm going to do my jailhouse confession um, as to what is really going on here in this series. You see, um, while I have paid the rent as a cartoonist and I have certain skills and abilities and insights and I do feel justified in critiquing comic art. Um, a lot of what's going on here is uh, opinion and speculation since I was not actually there or involved in the creations. But it is also my, my experiences, my feelings as a young person seeing these books and this art for the first time and having them inspire me to want to be a cartoonist. Um, as I've said before, it was Dave Cockrum's work that actually pushed me in that direction. <clears throat> but things like this uh, reinforce those feelings. So I am talking about these pages as a fan first and, and artist second. So with that in mind, um, the Incredible Hulk comic book at that time, uh, I guess it was somewhere between 13, 14, 15, was kind of a hit and miss uh, book for me. Uh, I kind of thought he really worked better, at this point, better as a supporting character. It was a little hard for me to get into a character that was kind of well done, you know? I mean, there was only a certain amount of depth, and when Banner came by, there was a lot of hand-wringing. Hand Still, I was a Marvel zombie, and I, and it was as well crafted as any other book, and I picked up every Marvel comic, and there was a lot to enjoy. But then we hit this era, and it was just great. As I said, we're in the middle of a great story arc by Roger Stern, and but the art was just seemed to be everyone was at their A game. Sal Buscema was doing great work, and. We just came off of three beautifully inked issues by Joe Rubenstein, and this issue, 226, is inked by another one of my faves, Joe Sinnott. Now, <clears throat> I will say I, I have had conflicted feelings. I, I'm always happy to see a Joe Sinnott job, and I always, and I especially like it when he's inking Sal. Um, but we had just had some momentum with. Rubenstein's work and I was just expecting more of that. So yeah, I was a little conflicted. I was like, hey, you know, this isn't what I was expecting, but but this was nice and familiar. As I've said, the Incredible Hulk title was always kind of hit and miss with me. But um, I and I think a lot of that has to do with yes, um, I there was a lot of inkers I didn't like over Sal that happened to work on the Hulk with him. I'm not going to name any because there's no need to be negative. There's so much to be positive about. Let's just talk about the good stuff, huh? Or what I feel is the good stuff. So, again, I, I love Joe Sinnott's work. I, we had an episode on, on, totally about him before. Um, I especially liked it when Sinnott inked uh, Sal, or, or rather when Sal was inked by Sinnott. And I saw a lot of that in other issues. But I've never seen Sinnott ink The Incredible Hulk. So that made it kind of special too. Uh, but it was a case of, I, I did say to myself, hey, wasn't what I was expecting, but the bar has not been dropped. We're still hitting the A game here. I'm happy. Hey, who knows Who knows what next issue's gonna be? And we'll find out. So I'm in my op-ed, uh, you know, editorializing, speculation, you know, commentary mode. Um, 
So in that uh, spirit, let's, uh, let's talk about the similarities and the differences between what's been going through this artistically. Uh, as most of you who are fans of this era know, we had like a murderer's row of inkers with Joe Rubenstein, Sinnott, uh, Jansen, McLeod, and Layton. And I, I guess I should have given all their first names and give them all their their uh, bios, but they're all going to get their own shows, so we'll, we'll handle it there. So, when you look at all of them except Senate, you're kind of looking at the Young Turks, at least in the grand scheme of things. Uh, all of them, except for maybe McLeod, have been working for some time. Uh, but but Senate's career length makes them look like the Young Turks, and he is the veteran. And uh, a veteran, though, who's still uh, vital and, and expressive and just uh, captivating. So that, that was a little bit, that kind of, another thing to kind of set it apart. I think everyone else, even if they, even if they hadn't worked for Dick Giordano, I think they were coming from the mindset of the Neil Adams School of Inking. And when I talk about Neil, I, I do want to talk about how when he came onto the scene, his impact was so great that it seemed like comics, the whole um, house style of comics became super realistic, photorealistic illustrations. You couldn't have the whimsy of a Ditko or the, or the expressionism, <clears throat> the expressionism of a Jack Kirby. Uh, and I think a lot of, of the 70s generation had invested themselves there. So what did Sinnott's work have in common with the title? Well, uh, like uh, Klaus Janssen, who had inked the Hulk quite a bit, hundreds of pages in Defenders, uh, Sinnott had a lot of opportunity to ink the Hulk in, say, the pages of Fantastic Four. I know of at least two uh, Thing versus Hulk uh, issues. Uh, one which wasn't too far, maybe just two years ago, where he inked over George Perez, which I loved. And I'll probably talk about that later from the from the aspect of a fan. So, as far except for Jansen, as far as um, experience inking the Hulk, he had the most, and probably him and Jansen are, are neck and neck on that. So, he's bringing uh, experience to this job, not just art, and not just um, um, you know uh, what is the word, not just tenure. You know, talking about Senate is a is a multifaceted and nuanced thing. So I'm going to just stop right there as far as talking about his his career as a whole. So, so his differences from the rest of the inking crew is that um, they're kind of the new kids on the block. He's the he's the experienced uh, wise man, and as far as similarities, he has the most experience inking the Hulk. So looking at these pages, um, it's another great job. And it's another time where I'm just so glad to see an inker on the Hulk. I'm always glad to see a Joe Sinnott job and always like it when when uh, Sinnott juiced or plussed Sal um, The only difference in the experience of reading it, is that yes, there's a certain uh, there's a certain zeitgeist, a certain you know over from Rubenstein that was kind of stuck in a certain way of using the uh, using the tools. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, like I was saying, I really don't think anyone had a greater uh, mastery of brush and ink than Senate, at, especially at this time. So, and that's what kind of also sets him apart uh, or from the other Young Turks, is that uh, they were doing a, a lot more with uh, pen, thinner lines, uh, different kind of rendering, and his, uh, his technique, while beautiful and super professional and just great, um, kind of set him in another time period 
or at the very least was setting him apart from the other guys. So that, that was also uh, part of the jarring experience opening that first page and it wasn't Rubenstein. Uh, but again, it was someone I loved. So it's, it's still a win-win. So. So, uh, as I said before, the comics fan, viewer, reader, and the artists have almost a telepathic rapport when you're reading the work. You can almost tell how hard someone worked on something. Um, I don't think uh, Sinet hacked this or anything, um, but I don't think he had anything to prove with this job. So I think it came very easy to him because, of course, he's he's got years of experience. This this uh, there was probably no challenge at all for him. So. We got a great book, but we just felt that Rubenstein and the others worked harder. Though that's not really the case. That's just a perception. So we're at the point where I say, you know, I just want to leave this up and let you experience the greatness for yourself. I mean, I could stand here and comment on his line weights and how he turned forms or how he rendered hair or trees or you know drapery or spotted blacks but um that's really just my opinion as a commentator and the work speaks for itself so it looks like uh visiting hours are about at a close as ever the warden is uh making the announcement that if you liked what you've seen here please feel free to hit the like button subscribe smash the bell uh, it helps the channel, it helps uh, grow a channel, and hopefully we're growing a community. I hope we're going to uh, have some nice conversations about these pages in this time. And as I've said, if you would like me to ink some of your pencils, feel free to submit them at the Facebook fan page, which is in the description. Uh, please just like heads or, you know, uh, figure work. Uh, don't really have time to do backgrounds and stuff right now, but I'd love to, you know, for us to have some fun time together. So until next time, please remember, four walls do not a prison make, but comics can make a very cool prison. Adios.